a while back I came up with the idea that you know trading really isn't like one big epiphany it's a lot of little 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 tiny things and I remember when I used to go to, to seminars initially I was like I expected that I walk away with all this information and be like oh I'm gonna make all this money and everything but it's like I didn't that didn't happen but what did happen was excuse me a little a bunch of little things that a bunch of little gems so to speak that I would accumulate and everyone thinks you're going to have this big epiphany when it comes to trading but it's actually literally almost a million little things now number 123,262 I will trade for growth and not income now you see all these YouTube ads of you know make $500 a day or whatever and, and all this other stuff well, trading for income is extremely difficult in markets, but trading for growth, like my friend Jeff here, who's still in the ARLP, he's also a client, he's doing pretty good and he's getting $2.80 a year in dividends on this thing. And so he's he's done quite well with that one stock and that, that growth is huge. And I'll show you that stock in just one second. Income strategies would be something like selling options, and that's a great way to have a very brief but brilliant career on Wall Street because sooner, sooner or later, you're going to get whacked. Now, I've kind of mixed in two things here. I kind of mixed in patience along with trading for growth because trading for growth requires a tremendous amount of patience. And that's why I showed a little bored lady earlier looking at her laptop because Sometimes you'll get bored to death waiting for these stocks to to move or stop you out. Worst case scenario. Anyway, Livermore. I spoke about Livermore two weeks ago at Van Camp, right? The desire for constant action, irrespective of underlying conditions, is responsible for many losses at Wall Street, even among the professionals. I haven't showed again a setup in a couple of weeks, and I got a couple of clients that are like. Come on, Dave, you got to find something. I'm like, well, I'm not seeing anything. And if not, if I'm not going to put capital in harm's way, neither should you. And as I've said a thousand times before, back in the trading markets day, they had salesmen who would call me and beg me to put some stocks on my trading service. And I wouldn't do it if I couldn't find anything. And, and what they've observed was if, or I've observed the same thing, if I would recommend stocks and they were just, they would fail miserably, you know, throw some turds out there or whatever. We'd lose a few clients, but not too many. But if I didn't recommend anything and I explained to them in careful detail why we're not doing anything and why I'm not doing anything and why you shouldn't do anything, we'd lose clients. And and it drove the, the salespeople nuts. Anyway, the desire for constant action, irrespective of underlying conditions, is responsible for many losses in Wall Street, even among the professionals who feel they must take home some money every day as though they were working for regular wages. I am a little guilty of that because I have all these screens. I've got one, two, three, four. I got five double monitors, so technically that could be 10. And then I have one big screen TV, so I don't know how you add all that up, but I have a lot going on and it, you can really get sucked in very easily to a lot of trades. By the way, and I, I think, I don't know if this was in one of the, um, previous webinars i'm sure it was but whenever i get whacked a little bit doing some intraday stuff which i shouldn't be doing as much as i do but whenever i get whacked a little bit i back off and then i say you know i'm only going to enter this on a stop above the market and try not to do too many market orders and i'm always shocked at how many bad trades i would have avoided by doing that so if you really want to be in the market on an intraday basis right and you see it going up and you think it looks pretty good put it in a stop order a little bit above where it's trading and you're going to be shocked how many times you're not going to get triggered on that order and how much money you save by not putting that capital in the harm's way now here's one that i tweeted out recently there are times when playing the stock market that your money should be inactive waiting in the side on the sidelines in cash 
waiting to come into play in the stock market. Time is not money. And that's a hard thing to kind of wrap your head around because we have all these, these expenses now. It's like, I used to never look at grocery prices. And last night I wanted to make a ribeye stew and ribeyes were like 20 something, 20 something dollars a pound. And I couldn't bring myself <laughs> to pay 20 something dollars a pound to, to make a stew out of ribeyes, you know, and I'll, I'll go Friday night, I'll, I'll, I'll get some and, and grill them up. You know, that's a different story. A little sous vide and then grill them up, just a little salt and pepper. Mm, so good. But I couldn't bring myself to do that. And I used to never look at prices. My wife, back before groceries were high, would always send me to the store, especially if we had to buy a lot of uh, high dollar items or expensive things because I never cared about prices. But anyway, it's, it's changed now to where you feel like, geez, I need to generate some money because everything's so damn expensive. Anyway, time is not money. Time is time. And money is money. Often money that is just sitting can later be moved into the right situation at the right time and make a vast fortune. Patience, patience, patience is the key to success, not speed. Time is a cunning speculator's best friend if he uses it right. And then the next line he said, remember, the clever speculator is always patient and has a reserve of cash. As I often say, and I've almost sank a couple of times offshore, one in particular I really remember because I remember my brain was never clearer in my life. <laughs> we were um, a couple of hundred miles outside of Bermuda, maybe maybe three or four hundred. I think we were halfway to Bermuda from Charleston, and we were above the, what is it, Mariana Trip Trench? I forget what it's called. So the, you know, two miles of water. Not that it matters once you're <laughs> once you're ten feet or more of, of five feet or more of water. You know, it's 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 deep enough to drown, obviously. Um, Anyway, we were sinking, and uh, it was a it was a scary, it was very 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 scary thing. Turns out we figured out what the problem was, fixed it, uh, no big deal. A guy actually did like a what's that movie Titanic, like a Titanic thing where he swam down and 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 got the sail out of uh, a spinnaker pole, and we began to slowly bail out. Um, scared man in a bucket, best bilge pump ever. <laughs> Anyway, the point I'm trying to make there, believe it or not, I have one. It's better to be on the dock drinking beer, wishing you were out to sea, than out to sea, wishing you were on the dock drinking beer. And I've been there a few times. I like what Mr. Eckert says, maybe inversely related to performance. And you got to be really, really careful with the in and out, in and out, and all that other stuff. And a lot of times, you know, I'm guilty too. We're all guilty, I think. We're all trying to make things happen every day for some of the aforementioned reasons. But the bottom line is be selective, be patient, let the market come to you. It's amazing. When I'm doing my scans, I was explaining to my clients earlier tonight, it's amazing that when I find setups, I usually find setups within the first two to three minutes of my analysis, okay, that I love. They just jump out at me, I flag them, and I'm like, I just had this good feeling like I got what I need. I already got what I need. I'm going to take another look at them. We'll, we'll take a look at everything else. I'll do a complete analysis, but but I got what I need. I, I have all that I need right now for the next trading day. If there's nothing out there like tonight, then I find myself just looking at charts, looking at charts, looking at charts, hoping that something will magically appear. Well, what I'm trying to say here is let the market come to you. The best setups will jump out at you after you have a little bit of experience. You'll have that F yeah feeling where you feel like you'd be stupid not to take the trade. And if that trade failed miserably, as I've said a thousand times before, you would say, so what? If I saw this trade again tomorrow, I would take it. 